Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It's your boy, the SMT. I went ahead and I did some testing for you all. I think you're really going to enjoy this video. I'm actually going to be testing T-Mobile's N41 and Verizon's Band 48. Now, the reason why I'm testing these two together is because I feel that T-Mobile and Verizon are doing the most for capacity with these newer, wider channels. All right now, AT&T is also boosting capacity. They're doing it more so with, you know, adding carrier aggregation to sites, you know, adding all the carriers, you know, that sort of thing. But what Verizon is doing with Band 41 with these wider channels, you know, we're seeing 40 megahertz and 60 megahertz of the 3.5 gigahertz spectrum. And then what, you know, we're seeing with T-Mobile's N41, 40, 60, 80, 100 megahertz channels, or excuse me, you know, I think it's 80 megahertz channels frequently is what people are seeing. I think 60 is the average. You know, I wanted to actually test it indoors. So I'm here. It's like um, there's it's like an office building. Uh, you know, I came in through that first entrance. You guys will see there. Uh, I just wanted to give you some results. So what I was seeing throughout the testing was that the N41 had a really nice range of 350 megabits per second, all the way upwards of like 500 megabits per second. Now, the tower site is close. It's probably, I don't know, maybe a fifth of a mile away. It's really, really close. The uh, It's a similar location, but in the opposite direction from the, C, uh, from the CBRS, the Band 48 for Verizon. And the N41 is an 80 megahertz channel. And then the Band 48 for Verizon is a 60 megahertz uh, application. And it's 20 megahertz blocks. So they aggregate, it is LTE, right? So they're a little different in how they're delivering the speed, but they're both getting the speed, right? There you'll see 80 megahertz and 41. Now, the reason I chose to do this testing is because I wanted to show indoor testing. Most of the testing that we do, you know, in most cases is outdoors because, you know, we're moving, we're going to different sites, you know, it's not always possible to just walk in somewhere and just start filming and, and, and such. So you kind of like, that's kind of why I've always tested for my vehicle. But I said, you know, oh, well, let me just go ahead and go in here. I don't even know if I was allowed in here, but, you know, whatever. I went in and I did some testing. 453 on the down for T-Mobile. There you got like 50 megabits on the up. Here's, uh, you know, uh, Verizon with 336 down and about 30 on the up. I'm just showing you guys some of the performance inside, indoors, because a lot of people had concerns about certain mid-band frequencies working effectively indoors. I think it's a bit overstated. In my opinion, I think mid-band works just fine indoors. The key is going to be densification and getting many, many sites upgraded with mid-band carriers. So I wanted to do this testing to prove this and to showcase the ability of mid-band. You know, everybody loves low-band as an indoor solution because of its propagation characteristics. You know, it can penetrate building materials and get indoors, especially lower levels. I, I understand that. But I think with proper... Uh, you know, dedication to, to densifying a network and getting many, many sites up, macro sites, small cells, it can be done. You know, mid-band can be basically the new low band, all right, but it just needs a lot of sites, and that's going to take time. And I think Verizon has committed to the, the densification process. Uh, you know, T-Mobile's kind of staying away from the small cells, but they're, they're committed to putting N41 on as many sites as possible and N71 sites and such. So... Like I said, I'm very, very impressed. There's the T-Mobile Band, 40, uh, Band 41 on the left, the N41, and on the right, the Verizon. Uh, 389 down, 32 up. There's T-Mobile 400 down, 34.7 up. So with this video, I was able to kind of address a couple of things. Some people were concerned about Band 41 not propagating uh, very well. I show it here. Clearly, it does work well. But also the Band 48 for Verizon, a lot of people were concerned, low power, you know, we've been seeing it mostly on small cells. We've been seeing it on macros, limited range. It is, you know, low power. All that stuff is accurate. But we're seeing it work, right? Here's a nice test from T-Mobile on the left there, 570 on the down. And I think this is where it gets about 60 on the up. So, you know, you could check out the incredible throughput there. Remember, it's an 80 megahertz channel. There is has a lot of bandwidth. Very, very nice. Uh, I think with Verizon, the last time I checked, uh, they were doing 60 megahertz of band 48, and then they were aggregating it with 
like a band two and a band 66 for an additional 15 or, or 20 megahertz. I forget what it was. Uh, now, the N41 site is on the other side of that glass down the street. And uh, you'll see because, you know, clearly when you get line of sight and, you know, you're you're close, you'll get incredible throughput. Uh, but I was very, very pleased. I, I had to do this testing. I think it was important. Uh, I, I actually I want to get some feedback from you guys now that you're you're seeing this happen. You're seeing the indoor, you know, the quality of signal, the speeds. You know, tell me what you guys think. Go ahead and, you know, give me some some feedback. Uh, I am testing the S20 Plus for the T-Mobile line on the left, and that is the iPhone 12 on the right uh, for Verizon on the Band 48. In my estimation, here's here's my takeaway. Band 48 is better than what people think. When it comes to propagation, as long as the tower site's close enough, it's very good. It doesn't have the range that the N41 has because of the power discrepancy. Uh, Band 41 or N41 for T-Mobile is high-powered for macro sites. It's it's very effective. People are saying they get up to two miles of range. In my estimation, you know, I'm getting effective range around a half a mile to three-quarter mile. I think that's got room for improvement. Here I'm doing like an outdoor test for you guys so you can see the difference. Now I want you to notice this here. All right, so you'll see the, the T-Mobile N41 on the left, 581 on the down. Look at the Verizon CBRS, the Band 48, 719 on the down. And I think the difference there is, I think it's the fiber optic backhaul. The fiber that's pushing the spectrum, the fiber that's run to the tower, it's just a higher capacity than what T-Mobile is doing. I think T-Mobile is going to have to eventually upgrade their backhaul on a lot of their sites to really get the most performance out of the spectrum, you know, as they push the N41. So I'll show you the N41 site. Uh, I'll take you over there and I'll show you guys the water tower that it's on, you know, to show you how close it was. But man, this was an incredible line of testing. I'm very happy to report the effective speeds of N41 and the effective speeds and range as well with, uh, you know, Band 48. They are great, great connections. Very excited for the sound off in the comment section. Your thoughts of the testing. Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new and have yet have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.